TikTokers unite. I don't know what else I was supposed to be saying in the, in the opening. Uh, I'm trying to do this under 10 minutes, but if I keep digressing, I might be going beyond 10 minutes and then I can't upload it on TikTok or something. I mean, I aim to just put it on all social media. So let's go back to the uh, iconic clash in the 1972 in between Bobby Fischer and, uh, and uh, Boris Paske. 1972, game number seven, which was a draw in the end. Now, Spassky White, Fisher plays black, uh, black. We're going to see a Sicilian Nidorf. Those of you that are familiar will find this one useful as per always. It's a reference game. Poison point variation. If you haven't played it, we're going to see it now, guys. So E4, let's just uh, get straight into the business. E4, C5, Knight F3, a bunch of theoretical moves. D4, challenging, takes Knight to F6, attacking E4, Knight C3. Now you're defending very nicely. Knight on C3 and A6. This is the Knight off, okay? Taking the B5, any attempts to placing a knight or a bishop, it's completely futile. <clears throat> it's been demoted completely. You cannot touch the b5. So, bishop g5 now, developing. A bit of a pin, but not a problem here, because uh, that will allow also the bishop on e7, so it's not a big problem of anything. f4, ambitious, taking a lot of space, and queen to b6, already aiming at b2. Need not to panic. Be like Spassky. Don't panic. <laughs> Play queen to d2. It doesn't matter if they take. You've got uh, two main ideas. You could either play like Boris Spassky, there's nothing wrong with that one, knight to b3. Or you could do the most common reply here, rook a to b, to which queen is being forced into moving a3. And then you may want to explore the f5, going forwards, forwards, forwards. You want to take here, you want to make it a mess. Uh, you're looking at idea, uh, at something like bishop d3. I mean, let's just play it. Let's just play it. This one, you're looking at this. The theoretical approach is something like knight to c6. You take, you take, you take here. And then they will be taking back with the bishop. And now you're looking at just simply playing some bishop e2. They're going to be playing some bishop e7 castles and everything is great. So you could explore this possibility here. But that's not what happened in the game, guys. What happened in the game was after queen b2, Boris Paske played knight to b3. Queen move on e3. They don't want to get trapped on anything. Bishop to d3. Developing and actually preparing to castle the king and, you know, placing a rook on the f file potentially. Castles and h6 first, probing the bishop. Bishop to h4. You don't want to lose that guy, don't you? Now he takes now the second pawn. He take uh, he takes the second pawn from Boris Pasky. Now he takes. And bishop takes here. Yeah. He played f5. But let me tell you something cool. If you ever have this position with white, you may want to explore the very subtle bishop b5. That is so, 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 so sweet. And now if you're telling... Yeah, but they're going to take my bishop, right? They might take it or not. But if they do take, you have the knight e6 defended by the queen. So the queen, the black queen can't take it. And you're checking the king. If the king moves away, you're going to grab the bishop here. If the king plays here, you, then you're going to take here on b5. And black has to play very carefully this idea. Very, very, very carefully. First, the knight attacks the queen. Now, I mentioned you already have a sort of collaboration here with the knight and the queen. So the queen has to go. Also need to move out of check and potentially defending the d6. Yes, of course, there is the queen on e6, you know, but you also have the queen b4. So it's getting very sharp, very nice and sweet. And you may want to explore this stuff, okay? But black has to be very careful here. And uh, white has the secret weapon up their sleeves. So, um, yeah. Anyway, he played it later. First, he just went with f5 takes and now he played bishop e5 check takes knight e6 as we discussed king to f8 taking the bishop knight to c6 now rook hits the uh, knight on c8 knight goes on d6 nice and safe and now pin oh what do we do we're in a pin you're absolutely fine here you could uh, diminish compensate a little bit from the uh, pawns that you've lost and now take something with tempo hitting the black queen knight to b5 if rook takes your queen the white knight takes the black queen. So queen goes away. Now, you're not going to lose your queen, don't you? So queen to f5. Okay, rook hits the queen. you got to move the queen away. Go to f5 very nicely. And f5 is under threat. g6. And now you push. He pushed. He pushed a4. Bishop attacks the queen with tempo. You have to move it. Queen to c4. Bishop checks. Moves away. Coming down. 
and now very nice and very sweet now boris basket plays g3 they try to dismantle the structure here and reinforced by fisher with g5 rook a to e1 places the bishop in a pin queen go now he goes for the he goes for the uh, for the trade here he goes for the trade probably he was thinking that just getting the knight to tempo hitting the c2 implicitly the e1 well spasky just acquiesced knight b4 so rook to e2 because you want to defend the c2 right you don't want to lose that pawn unnecessarily very big danger there knight to a5 aiming the b7 we've highlighted here aiming at the spawn going forward now you can take empty space if you want <laughs> Knight goes back, attacking the e3, pretty much like once and twice. So black has to be very careful about that uh, situation. So knight now defends twice. Pay attention, guys, on uh, the this perpetual dance of attackers and defenders. Always count the attackers and defenders. So that's a very valuable lesson. Okay, so now knight now plays nicely on d6. I would uh, reckon actually the intention would be to go on f5, checking and having a third attacker on e3. Obviously, Bob is not going to fall for that. Uh, bishop to c5. Now he attacks on d6 twice. He, oopsie, bishop and rook, and only one defender, so you got to do something. Knight to b7, attacking the rook. Rook goes on c5. c4, hitting the black knight now. Look how nicely they creating threats after threats after threats. Knight goes on e3, but not just going on e3. Also, the rook on f1 is being attacked here, my chess friends. Rook to f3. The danger for black is, again, uh, take, take, take. So you got to be careful about this guy here. <clears throat> Takes on c4, though. Takes a pawn. Moving down. <coughs> so you don't particularly want to take here. It's just a lot of uh, uh, potential danger on the g5. So you really don't want to take. So g4 uh, coming down the board here, rook to d3, and the other pawn reinforcing. h3, of course, with the same perennial idea. There will be that if you're tempted to take, obviously, you're opening up again the g file for the rook uh, speculation and hit on the uh, black king. Now he goes with a suspicious little move here, knight a5, uh, right on the rim. Um, the idea I suspect was just to deflecting the knight away from guarding to d8 so that he could just potentially get some rooks here and counteract the white rooks uh but now he just found a resource here he played just knight d6 therefore making this guy just keep staying idle on the rim there so knight to d6 that's what he chose to play bishop takes and knight takes and check king to g2 knight comes closer knight to uh e8 checking the king goes on g6 pushing h4 f6 now and double attack on f6 nice and sweet here check first moving again king attacks the rook and you might be tempted not to say oh i have to move the rook i have to move the rook also there there is also something very very resourceful and very nice and very creative here knight g7 of course boris basky saw that before checking the king and providing defense for the rook takes check though and, and that's also very, very, very important. You've got to be very careful. Don't get yourself lost in all sorts of uh, uh, potential uh, uh, plans because you always have to stay in touch with the reality of the position here. We've got to be very careful about the check pay because the kings are in opposition. And actually, if you don't pay attention, if you don't move out of the opposition or check the king straight away, you're going to have a big problem here and getting just checkmated. So knight f5, right, right when it was very much needed to and now the rook comes on e4 a lot of pressure on the black king so black king really they got to play this one super super carefully and it's incredibly dangerous you can't afford any tempo being wasted here so now uh, bobby fisher goes for a perpetual check because uh, anything else is highly 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 risky here it's 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 super big problem you got to be very careful so and also there's not too much you could do so he just simply was very happy in this position playing with black uh, to just draw right at this stage so he just continued one more time and the game had been adjudicated i'm recording guys as a i am recording please as a draw <laughs> someone just came into the room right at the very end okay we'll continue guys shortly with uh, some other chess content thank you very much for watching this subscribe to this channel follow me on the uh, live streams and uh, more stuff to come very soon thank you very much for watching